imagine a world without the backbone of steel a world that lacks strength that lacks stability and resilience but within this realm of civil engineering lies a secret weapon reinforcing bars or as we lovingly like to call them rebar in this video we will explore this unsung hero in a little more detail we will look at the various shapes and sizes this comes in we will look at the various types and also the various functions each of these types plays in maintaining our modern skyline rebar which is short for reinforcing bar is basically a bar of steel or it can be a mesh of wires which are used in masonry and reinforce concrete structures it's basically a steel backbone that turns wobbly mushy concrete into something that can bear the weight of our dreams without even breaking a sweat think of rebar as a strict parent to a rebellious teenager concrete might have all the compressive strength in the world but when it comes to handling tension or tensile forces concrete is a bit of a drama queen so that's where rebar comes into picture with a knack for bonding well with concrete together this duo they turn into something that can handle everything from a sidewalk to a skyscraper without rebar concrete is weak it's bland it crumbles under pressure so the next time you are marveling at a skyscraper or just taking a walk on the sidewalk you should be thanking rebar for holding all of this together rebar is manufactured in various sizes this can be 6 8 10 12 16 20 25 32 40 or even 50 millimeters of course we are talking in terms of diameters here the 6 mm and 50 mm uh, rebars they are non preferred sizes and are barely used these are only used and manufactured in exceptional circumstances an important thing for every civil engineer out there to remember is how we calculate the weight of rebars it's a simplest of the formulas that you see on the screen the weight of rebar is d squared divided by 162 d is of course the diameter of the bar let's take a couple of examples let's take a 10 mm bar for example a 10 mm bar would weigh 10 squared divided by 162 which is what this means is if you were to take um, 1 meter length of a 10 mm bar it would weigh 0 0.616 kilogram let's take another example really quickly let's take a 32 mm bar for example the same exercise 32 squared divided by 162 which gives us roughly 6.3 kilograms again this means a 1 meter run of a 32 mm bar would weigh 6.3 kilos approximately we can repeat this exercise and use the same formula to calculate the weight of any diameter of rebar now let's look at and explore the various types of rebar rebar is manufactured generally as um, mild steel bars these can be deformed steel bars which can be tmt high strength deformed bars they can be carbon steel they can be epoxy coated galvanized and a few other types let's take a look at each of them briefly mild steel rebars the picture that you see on the screen is a picture of a plain round surface this is a very versatile material that can be crafted in a wide range of sizes accommodating the needs of various projects despite its adaptability mild steel typically exhibits poor bonding properties making it um, less suitable for applications that require stronger adhesion this is uh, generally used in smaller projects where there are budget constraints a big advantage here is that mild steel can be uh, manipulated as in bent in any shape or form that makes it slightly preferable especially like i said in smaller scale projects tmt bars also known as thermomechanically treated bars these bars undergo a specialized heat treatment process this results in the formation of um, ribs and lugs that you see on the screen this uh, this results in a standout feature of these bars that they bond exceptionally well with concrete because of the ribs and lugs these bars boast impressive seismic resistance properties uh, this enables structures to uh, withstand the forces exerted during 
earthquake. Also, their um, thermal resistance makes them ideal for constructions where uh, there are very high temperatures. This helps in um, safeguarding them against uh, structural damage due to high temperature. Basically, TMT bars are the bars that you ideally would be using on your everyday projects, whether these are residential, commercial, or even industrial projects. Similar to the TMT bars, the high strength deformed steel bars, they also are utilized widely in the industry. These also have very good bonding capabilities. Once again, these bars also offer seismic and thermal resistance, making them ideal for um, structures where we have uh, earthquakes and very high temperatures. A very important feature of these bars is their ability to be welded. So whenever there is welding required for these bars, uh, HSD bars are preferred. Um, just like TMT bars, these bars are also used in residential, commercial, as well as industrial projects. Carbon steel bars. These bars, commonly known as black bars, these are highly susceptible to corrosion because their composition primarily consists of iron and carbon. These bars are generally used once again when there are budget constraints. So whenever carbon steel bars are used, generally the time period between fixing of steel on site and um, the actual casting of concrete should be minimal. In order to make carbon steel bars uh, more usable, these are generally treated with protective coatings etc. which lead us to the next type of bars which is the epoxy coated bars. Epoxy coated rebars are basically carbon steel rebars. We apply a layer of epoxy resin to overcome the problem of corrosion. Um, I personally use this type of rebar in one of my projects. We were building a power plant near the sea in Dubai. As you know, Dubai is a place where it gets really humid during summers and especially near the sea. So we had massive problems with the rusting of steel. So the engineer on site instructed us to use epoxy coated rebars instead. The problem with this rebar though is during transportation and fixing of steel these rebars come in contact with each other etc etc that results in little bit of a damage to the epoxy coating so then what we do is we normally have to do touch-ups etc on site to make it rust proof now to overcome this problem this leads us to our next category of rebar that is galvanized rebar galvanized rebar is manufactured by Instead of epoxy coating, we dip the steel rebars in zinc. They offer a much, much, much superior corrosion resistance and as a result are a little more pricey. These can be up to 1.4 or 1.5 times as costly as epoxy steel rebars. Um, these rebars are rarely used though, except when the budgets are high and projects are kind of prestigious like monuments, museums, etc, etc. There are a few other uh, types of rebars, but these are barely used. Uh, for example, glass fiber reinforced polymer rebars. There are even stainless steel rebars. But uh, as you can imagine, these types of rebars, they are really, really pricey and are only used in exceptional circumstances. For example, um, maybe we're doing a project in the middle of a sea. So that's when uh, we could use these type of rebars. So this was a really high level overview of rebar, its shapes, its types and applications. In the next video, we will take a deeper look into the actual site applications of rebar. We will take a deep dive into the bar bending schedules. Uh, the cut and bend process etc etc so stay tuned show the channel some love until then happy building